All right, we are live, Facebook Live. We are now recording everything. This part of the is gonna. This part of the recording is gonna go on the podcast. So what you guys are watching, what you guys are listening to right now, is gonna be part of the podcast. So if you guys want to be part of the podcast and part of the vlog, go ahead, leave me comments. I'll try to do what I can to throw a shout out for you guys who are on here. We have a very special guest on today by the name of Salem Murphy. If you guys haven't seen her shows or any of her things that she does, we'll, we'll definitely touch on that today. But what I'm going to do and what I always do for my podcast and my vlogs, we're going to get this started. Whoa, whoa, what happened there? Welcome everyone, it's the Daily Podcast and the Daily Vlog with your host, Eric B. I am live on Facebook. I have a special guest that I'm bringing on that is coming on very shortly. I have her on. She's in the waiting room. Oops, don't want that. Don't want the, the loud background noise going on. So I try to put everything on mute. All right. Salem Murphy is going to be on. If you guys haven't watched or if you guys haven't been following me on any social media, Falcon Winter Soldier, Echoes of Regret, For Life, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, she's my second MCU guest. And I'm going to bring her in while I play a song in the background. All right. She is coming on right now. I don't yes. know if you hear the song, yes. Salem. Hi. How I are you? <laughs> she's e she's in the house. <laughs> I got the Stranger Things background going on for you. I was trying to think of all these other songs, but I'm like, all right, let's let's go ahead and throw the Stranger Things song on. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Everyone who's watching on Facebook Live, people who are reaching out to me all day, Salem Murphy, let's go ahead and give her a round of applause right here. Oh, my God. Finally got to see you live or talk to you here. We, we yeah. talked on the phone briefly Good the other day. Thank you. And I was very intrigued with everything that we talked about. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I know she's Middle Eastern descent, <laughs> but I hear, I hear of, um, I hear a Caribbean accent, right? <laughs> the island thing going on. <laughs> the, I was like, I was like, wait a minute, what, what, what are we, what are we talking here? Wait, did I get the right number? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so, Len, let's go ahead and go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone here. So, hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, me, Salem Murphy, um, actor, mom. What else can I say? <laughs> You're a writer and a producer. I saw one of your shorts that I was watching um, that you wrote, Grapes, Grape Leaves. Grape Leaves, yeah. Oh, my God. That yeah. one. If you guys watch some of her stuff that she has on, Grape Leaves is something that hits us all who, you know, if you, if you live in the United States, even if you haven't lived in the United States, you guys all know what happened in 9-11 during that time. and. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that in this one. I was, I was like, wow, what are they? The grape leaves look good. I was going to ask you about that, like what kind of food it was. And then it went from cooking to like, yeah. all right. Well, yeah. How That's, was how? Yeah, I was just going to say we started out thinking, um, you know, food is always that great equalizer. They always say it always brings people together and um, gives them something, you know, in common. So it's something everybody enjoys and, you know, um, yeah, that was, I mean, that, that short honestly started out as what I was hoping would be a documentary. Yeah. And, uh, boy, I've, my hats off are document to documentary makers. It's, it's, that's not an easy task, but, uh, and actually it was my daughter that mentioned, she said, you know, mom, you ought to just do this as a short first. And I went, Oh, okay. And just explored that. And yeah, we came up with this script and my whole, I guess the whole goal or the hope um, was just for it to start a conversation and give a different perspective because elements within the short was really what I experienced as an Arab American going through 9-11. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I was, I was going to ask you during that time you, you were living here, 
what um you did mention um you were you moved to new york back in 20 was it 2016 is what you said you moved yes. to new york yes so so before that yeah. how was it you know how was it when you first moved to new york and was it welcoming and new york's not that that much of a welcoming city from what i heard this is all hearsay you know i'm not a new yorker um so how was it you know you being an arab american moving to a city like new york was were they welcoming to you I can tell you all the hearsay you've heard about New York is incorrect. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing the Statue of Liberty shirt. There you I, go. I was trying to wear a shirt that, that fits you perfectly. Yeah, I, so. You know, I have met the nicest, most welcoming. I mean, you know, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have some elements of what you've heard. It's It's just a bigger city. It's more people. So... By proportion wise, you're gonna you're gonna encounter something, but I I just have met the nicest, um, most welcoming people. And I think what I admire about New York is um, or you know, the Northeast in general, but especially uh, New York and my industry is um, they're 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 so used to this huge melting pot that's yes. us in this country. Um, so I don't think that was ever you know, any question or any sort of discomfort. Okay. They're just, you know, they're just used to having anything and everything, you know, coming in to try and to try and make it there, as they say, it's Frank Sinatra song. Yeah, um, yeah. You can make it and, there. Yeah. You can make it anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Apparently, exactly. That's, yeah. that's what they say. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. So, couple questions that I did have for you again. This is uh, Sela Murphy for you guys who are just tuning in. Um, I reached out to her because of, you know, the MCU, she was in Marvel. And then what I always do is when I, when I reach out to someone and they say, yes, I go in deep into their bio, their, their movie history. I, I, I'm just going to say, wow, with the stuff that Thank you've you. done, Thank you shared, you shared, um, uh, was it Uz Uzma the greatest? Yeah. You shared that with me on, on Vimo the other day. I watched it and yeah. I texted you right away and I was like, oh my God, this is six minutes. And I felt <laughs> all six minutes of what you were going oh, through. Good. I felt, I felt your, I felt the, the whole pain, the whole, I think I want a cigarette. I think I want to drink. I, I, I felt all that. And, yeah. and there was a scene and, and if you guys haven't watched it too bad, I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to talk about the show. Um, but was that scene where you took the bike and then you you rode it out and yeah. then you put the TV when you were coming back on top of it and you were nice enough to put the bike back? <laughs> that that was all the the producer and the, the the creators of that that short film. Um, just a lot of guidance. That was yeah. That because you know the character she's she was determined, but she also yes. was you know. <laughs> but see, let me ask you this: Why didn't they tell you? Okay, let's let's have you bring the bike back to your house, then bring the TV up, then bring the bike back. I mean, to me, that would have made more sense instead of you lugging that big 46 inch yeah. TV by yourself. It's a good question. And I think because of in this film, I, this was actually a, a very challenging short um, yeah. because there was no script. So, yes. and I think ha putting the bike back and making the trek, with the TV to walk to her. I think that was all part of the journey. That was part of, you know, she was still trekking with that, that TV, you know, she, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was, yeah, that was part of the job and the, the work that she was doing to recoup whatever it was that was lost in the beginning. So to, she had to do continue that hard work right till the end. <laughs> and what, what I loved about it, well, like I said, six minutes and it was all, there was no words. Yeah. You got, all just looking at each other. Even when you when you asked for the cigarette in front of the Best Buy, you just did the whole you know universal sign for let me get a cigarette. And I was yeah. like, I was like, wow, that you know? was that was a fun, yeah, that was a fun, um, fun and challenging role. And uh, yeah, the creators of of Uzma were just it, it was just really creative from beginning to end, and what they were you know what they were trying to do with that film. Christopher Hawthorne was a director and he was also the writer. So yeah. good job for, for Christopher Hawthorne for coming out with and that. And Miriam, um, um, Miriam was also co-creator in that. She was uh, the one that kept us all you yeah, know, going yeah. there. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was pretty, it was a great, um, 
That was that really was a great character. I really loved that. I really liked Uzma. <laughs> what I loved about it was you just played you. You just you know you you're the housewife. Um, yeah. It doesn't tell us the story of what happened. It just shows that you know husband got mad, smashed the TV, and I don't understand what you guys were watching. So you guys were watching it in a different language. So yeah. it could have been something that made him mad on the news or something like that, that he just smashed the TV and you were like, all right, well, I guess it's time to buy a new TV anyway. So yeah, <laughs> yeah let's just do it. Why not go all the way to New York? <laughs> let's go all the way to New it York. Was, and, you know, it was her more escaping. I think part of that, I think part of that scene, especially in the beginning, you know, I could have easily gone to, you know, a store a lot closer to home, yeah. I think for her, it really was about that determination to now step out of whatever it was that was more or less confining her or defining her. And, yes. and that was that was the whole that was a real TV in there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, in the box, right? The one you're in carrying? the box. It was oh, yes, it was predetermined that I'd be carrying an actual wow. TV. <laughs> so I think that was all part of, you know, it was. I, I felt like that whole process was symbolic, even though it sounds cliche, it was really symbolic of what that moment was for her from the beginning and what she was trying to do by the end of, oh, wow, okay. you know, you can smash the TV, but let's go. This is what's going to happen. Let's do it. Exactly. <laughs> and then I went, I went ahead and watched um, Echoes of Regret. Yeah. Oh, that's two thousand. Wow. You went way back. I went way back. I told you, as soon as I found out you were coming on, I wanted to dig in and I was like, okay, let me go watch this. Watch Echoes of the Great Regret first, people, then watch Uzma the Greatest. Um, don't go reverse like I, what I did, you know. <laughs> I went and watched Uzma the Greatest first and Echo of Regrets and oh, I was yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. That was a that was another powerful one. And that one was actually filmed um again, it was just showing you know, just what we all experience really in life. And yeah. uh, again, another another short and another opportunity where they weren't holding back the directors, the creator, the writer. Oh my God. Yeah, they weren't. Yeah. 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 But I, I, what I liked about that one was, you know, the twist. There was a twist. Again, if you guys haven't watched it, you guys got to get on, go watch it. The twist that they had on there, it's like, you know, your husband was doing whatever he can to, to you know, say goodbye to you or get rid of you. But the person was like, no. Yeah. And then to show the story of why he did that later on, I was like, wow. Yeah. Yes. That's, wow. that's, I, I really appreciated that's that, you know, the angst that he ends up being conflicted. I don't yes. want to give it away saying who he is. But, I, I, yeah. You know, that, that actually came as a surprise to me. And we, we deliberately didn't interact as the both of us, just so that scene could be, you know, what it needed to be. Yeah, I wasn't no. expecting him to do that, the the director and creator of that that film. Yeah, wow, no, it was, really dug way back. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it oh, was it was okay. one of those it was one of those things where I appreciate the series, like, you know, you were in Law and Order or was it Law and Order you were in? Yeah. yeah victims, I, I, special I, victims unit. Special victims. I appreciate those, but it's these shorts where yeah. if you're gonna give me ten minutes of you acting you're going to give me the best 10 minutes that you can just because you have 10 minutes. Oh, you right? have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to. So you have to give the best of that. So in like Uzma the Greatest, six minutes, I was like, wow, what are you going to do in six minutes? And again, like I was telling you earlier, I felt all six minutes of what you did from oh, the good. TV to finally sitting on the couch and, you know, watching TV at the end. I was like, wow. You know, this is this is like every day for some people, right? This is how some of us are every day. So, oh yeah, yeah. That, well, thanks for mentioning that. And again, I I I can't. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't really say this was these these are the creators. And shorts are so powerful. I mean, I yes. had you know I had the good fortune of of working with you know Chris and Miriam and everyone on on Echoes of Regret trying to do that whole thing. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, shorts are really, they're great. They are the hardest to do because as you said, you've got, and there's so many different lengths of shorts that you could do, yes. but you really have to get your, your point across. You really have to get that across in, in a little time. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and and grape leaves was a you know um, grape leaves was my first time you know venturing where I'm I'm wearing all the hats as it were, and uh, it's it's not an easy feat. I have to tell you, no. <laughs> stressful. You were the you were the writer in that, right? You were the sure, writer, co-writer. Writer. You, yeah, it co-writer, was another okay. friend of mine that did it with with me. Um, I approached her, and it was just again, it was I think that one was um, I think that one was. The, the trickiest to just jump into because it really was based on not just how I experienced 9-11, but how it ended up affecting me and landing on me in the years afterwards. And so, yes. yeah, it was a, it was a big, it was a risk uh, on doing that one, but a, a risk I'm glad I took. Yeah, no, it was, it was a deep, powerful, um, you know, you. The, the just what was, I think that was like, 12 minutes or, or 11 minutes. Yeah. I think um, that one we did a little longer, a little longer, yeah. but just from, from, like I said, I thought it was a, I thought it was a grape leaves. I thought you were talking about the food. I thought you're doing all that. Yeah. And then when, when your daughter who plays your daughter comes in and says, mom watches, I already knew. I'm like, Oh God, this better not be nine 11. Yeah. And sure enough it was, I was like, yeah. Oh man. And then, you know, the little tea party that you were having. I mean, that's part of the questions that I was going to ask you was, you know, how do you feel being a Middle Eastern? Is it is it considered Middle Eastern or are you considered Arab? I, I want to say the right thing. I don't want to say the wrong it, thing. No, that's okay. Middle East is just, you know, all the countries comprising yes. part of that world. So Middle East is fine. Okay. Okay. I want to get it right. I don't, <laughs> I don't want, you know, I don't want all these hate uh, Facebook comments <laughs> that I want to get later on. How does it feel being an American Middle Eastern actress mm in the United States, but the roles that they give you are mainly Middle Eastern characters. Mm -hmm. Lucky, <laughs> really lucky. Um, and, you know, and I, I am proud to say that I'm Arab American. Um, you know, yes. I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to, you know, it's a huge, it was three aspects of my, my background, you know, my, my Caribbean heritage, my Syrian culture, and then moving here, you know, with the American culture, um, just really lucky. And I also got to play, you know, characters that, you know, were a little bit different as well. Um, especially the, the, the later ones like Stranger Things and yes. Marvel Studios, you know, just honestly, just really lucky. And I, um, you know, I, 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 I welcome that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Stranger Things for for a lot of people who don't who haven't watched, she played the principal in Stranger Things. It was a high school principal, right? High school, yeah. And if you blinked, you missed me, but apparently a lot of people didn't blink because I No. <laughs> I got that note. Were you in Stranger I Things? <laughs> I told you, I told you, I told you when I spoke to you on the phone, I was like, when I saw your character on Captain America or the uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, I'm like where do I know her from? <laughs> I know fun. I know her from somewhere. Sure enough, IMDb, and I'm like, oh, Stranger Things, Things. Stranger <laughs> yeah. Things. And I got a soundbite for that for, for you guys who didn't watch. Nancy this is Wheeler, <laughs> if you'll come with me, please. My famous line. I love that. They, and they were everyone on that set was great. I mean, you know, again, it was just, and actually Noah Schnapp, who plays yes. Will in Stranger Things, imagine, you know, it, really the whole Six Degrees thing, um, Years later, Abe, I play his grandmother. He's he's the wow. Yeah, in Abe, he actually is Abe in that wow, independent okay. film. Another wow. Another no, really, I'm pinching myself a lot of times. Another really wonderful, wonderful independent film, and that's another film that just tackles. <clears throat> excuse me, tackles the Middle Eastern under that umbrella, Israel, Palestinian. It's a um, culturally diverse family that's that has is to comes together uh through marriage and etc and and will um play uh noah schnapp plays you know this coming of age young man in a different coming of age theme umbrella okay, nice. whatever you want to call it. yeah nice let me ask you this is one of the questions that i have for you from stranger things to falcon and the winter soldier <laughs> you got two i would call them sci-fi movies yeah right or shows and then you have um shows like uh, you did reckless where it could be a little bit more true to what was going on in the world right right 
what do you like playing better? Do you like playing that sci-fi character role or do you like playing the true, you know, person playing, you know, an Arab lady on, on TV or movies? That's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, I always had this, you know, I still have this crazy dream that I one day will still get to play an action hero. Maybe the old lady walking in. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. That's a good question it. because I, I, um, you know, I guess it, it, I like just playing characters that, um, and I've, again, I've had the really good fortune of being able to do that characters that, are in a sim are in an environment that you would expect, but the characters themselves are counter to what you might expect. If that yes, if that makes sense. Yes, yes, it uh, does. It does. I don't know. Sci-fi is sci-fi would be fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, good thing is Stranger Things is coming back out, and and you didn't die in the movie or the show, right? So they could still bring you back. So <laughs> they could. They still could bring. I don't you know. Back. That principal needs to to go to the down under or something. And, and oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that that show took me forever to finally watch. And when I finally oh. watched it, I binge watched the first like three. We were on a flight to Hawaii, and I downloaded everything on my on my iPad. I'm like, I'm on the flight, and I'm watching this. And I'm like, right. we can't land yet. We can't land yet. <laughs> I gotta finish this episode. But yeah, that that show, man, man, I can't wait for the next season to come. And hopefully, you'll be on that season as well. That hopefully would be nice to that. have the principal yeah. come back and uh, yeah. do something crazy. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can do the whole. You can do the whole. Nancy Wheeler, <laughs> if you'll come with me, please. Nancy Wheeler, we need you back. You know, back um, the, the fun part about that was when I actually, um, when I was on set, it was sort of the towards the front end of that series, and what I thought was really interesting was, again, everyone they were so excited about the the whole concept of the of that show. I was just, you know, it's a sort of. I don't know. It was sort of Rod Sterling meets, I don't know, <laughs> dump in a whole bunch of other, Every, and yeah. I think everyone on the set, you know, they, they were excited about what they were doing and the theme and, and loved what was, what was happening. I don't, I don't think anyone anticipated not just, I mean, the success, yes, but the sort of following that they had, yeah. I think everybody was just ready for something like that. Yeah, I mean, we were we were just getting over zombies. You know, zombies was kind of like right. out the door, and then when Stranger Things came on, we're like, okay, what is this about? We don't, and uh, you know, you like you said, it was superhero slash sci fi. You know, it's like, wow, yeah, you know, I kind of I kind of enjoy this. So, and you know, with the whole COVID thing, everything happened. You know, twenty twenty. I know a lot of productions got pushed back because of what yeah. was going on. Um, so I'm hoping for a strong 2021 for you and for everyone else. Oh, who yeah. Needs to for get everyone back to in work. my industry. Yes. 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 I yes. think everybody's ready. <laughs> yes. How how rough was that for you? I mean, um, what, did you have things planned and then had to get shut down because of COVID? Yes. Marvel was one. Um, we we went down and uh, did it. I think the one of the episodes, it was very, very early March it was late February, early March, March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, somewhere around yeah. there. And then the plan was to go back in April and do the other episode. And then of course we all, you know, everything got shut down. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, I going into New York, I think it was September when, um, they were ramping things back up and I got the call to say, Hey, it's been a while. We're ready to go and um went into the to the city to get tested you know before yeah. i went down to get that that um result <sighs> you know when you asked how was it it was it was heartbreaking to see new york yeah. during covid it really yeah. was yeah yeah um, i bet it was it that talk of that felt like it was a surreal sci-fi place i mean i deliberately stayed a little bit longer and just wanted to walk around and just the energy was just it was gone wow. so I'm, I'm hoping um and i'm sure it will new yorkers have that kind of resilience yeah. that i've seen you know so yeah it that was a very surreal moment so it was it was thrilling to get the news to say hey we're ready to ramp Let's up go. and of course they filmed in georgia so that was a a, a benefit for there new york is just now 
um, I mean, they were starting to do filming. For example, SVU was was filming, but I think yes. the, really the push is really now to to just get get going. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of family and friends that 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 live in New York. Oh yeah, and yeah. to see their Facebook, their Instagram post showing us, you know, a deserted Times Square or you know <sighs> nothing. Yeah, it was it was it was it was it was heartbreaking, and and you know, not just for New York, but San Francisco, we suffered as well. You know, our tourist industry went down. Right. Um, cable cars had to be shut down. I mean, the wow. good thing is, the good news is, we're 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 moving forward. We, we you know. We all should be vaccinated or somewhat be vaccinated. So there's a way we can all move forward from this and 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 get you back on the screen, get you back, you know, <laughs> out there. Um, I was supposed to ask you a bunch of questions at the beginning, but um, we just got off and talking. Um, That's all right. Let, let's let's get back to the questions. I have a notebook here that I that I write things in. <laughs> um, what got you into acting? Ah. Uh. Well, when I moved to the U.S., I actually started out just playing music and being the, you know, did band and chorus and all that stuff um, because it was, it was a place I, 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 it was a place that made me feel at home Yes. In, in this new culture, you know, trying to figure out what just happened. Why did my dad move us here? <laughs> um and then, you know, I went to college and and I think, you know, something like the creative world, it never, I don't think it ever leaves a person, especially if it's, you know, it showed up as a great outlet. And yes. after I had my kids, I just decided, you know, well, let me just do some some plays. That was that was how I was gonna dip my toe in the creative, just to do something on my own without taking away too much from you know, my responsibilities and where I wanted to be. And then it evolved from there. It just, nice. um, yeah. As the kids got older, I dabbled more and more while in Florida. Okay. So, um, and that was, you know, that was a wonderful, wonderful time. And nice. yeah, just kept going as the doors were opening up. I thought, okay, I'll step in. <laughs> nice. And, and you know what? I'm glad they did because, you know, we wouldn't have seen any of the stuff that you were in if you decided you know what? Maybe I won't do it today. Oh, you know what? That audition yeah. can wait. I mean, it, it was good. It was good um, perseverance for you to say, you know what? This is what I want to do. And this Thank is, you. you know, this is why the whole podcasting came for me is because yeah. I never wanted to podcast. I didn't want to do these videos before. But <laughs> once I started, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. This all happened because of the pandemic. You believe that oh. or not? I, I did a vlog. I was a vlogger where I was going around San Francisco just showing part of San Francisco that you guys don't know is in San Francisco. Right. I was doing that every day. I enjoyed doing it. And then the pandemic hit and yeah. we had to wear a mask and the places that I could go to was just like, I can't go here without wearing a mask. But at the same time, the whole vlogging thing is showing my face. So uh, I said, you know what? Let, let's do something else. So this came about and you know, here we are. <laughs> I, it, and that's, that's, I think, um, if, if there's, you know, any sort of positives, I guess, for people that can come out of it is, is we have to pivot. <laughs> yes, we have to find. Everybody had we, to pivot. We have to find a way to drop the 20, 30 pounds that we gained during COVID and find uh, a new yeah. outlet in life and what we can do. <laughs> Still working on that. <laughs> Still working on that. Um, who inspired you to be an actress? Oh, hmm. Um. Uh, you know, it was the old movies, the oldies. Uh, I, I love my oldies. Mom, um, really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I remember my dad always loved to watch the westerns, especially when we before we moved here. You know, we got very limited television on on the island, and uh, I remember watching American westerns and watching some some oldies, um, uh, film wise. I can't pinpoint any one actor or person um i think it was just being around my my family where we you know i grew up with with music um grew up with a lot of um like relatives that you know were creative in some way shape or form and you know i i i think i just drew from that and again you know just moving here the creative part it just 
it was something that I felt where, okay, this is a place where I can belong while I'm figuring things out in this new culture. But I, w- I wish I could tell you any one person that, um, that's a good question. <laughs> if I come up with it, I'll let you know. <laughs> How tough was it for you? Are you, you being a Arab in the United States and one also being a female, um, in the United States, I know that's rough, you know, like there, there's a hole where men gets paid more than females or, oh. you know, that equal opportunity thing when it comes to acting, how difficult was it for you to be a female yeah. Middle Eastern trying to get into the business? Hmm. It, you know, it wasn't so much the, um, the cultural part of it. I think, because I think, I, I guess maybe for me, I'm coming into it now where the mentality is changing. I'm not sure that we're we're done yet. And I suppose yes. that I don't know if I see it as um, as difficult as much as it is the willingness for people to be more open and see um, actors of Middle Eastern or whatever cultures, you know, that we can play the blockbuster films as well. We can do something, at least for me, I don't, I I prefer to be seen as an actor, an actor doing her craft as best as she can, rather than Middle Eastern female actor. I think that to me, that makes it, um, I don't know, that makes it more embedded in the model. We have to do this because ABC needs to be checked. Yes. I think that I, I can imagine a lot of people, if you had to ask, probably feel the same way, you know, to be hired that because you're looking at someone as a female of another culture and wow, they have some talent. Let's let's do something with this. Let's create a wonderful film, a wonderful series. And I think that's what a lot of us are are working on. Many people creating their own content, you know, as Middle Eastern character, as Spanish as Asian, you know, it's, that's, yes. that's what's having to happen. I don't, I think that's a good thing because I believe it actually forces us to also be creative and step up and, and take people by surprise. <laughs> oh, you I- are, again, I said, I said it earlier, you're an incredible actress and, Thank and you. just watching the stuff that you put out and, and there's certain actors and actresses that I watch where, I try to put myself in their shoes and try to feel the role that they're going through. I seen a clip in reckless and I, I just couldn't, I I was like, I have to pause it. I have to turn it off because putting myself in your role, I was like, I'm feeling that character that you had in there. Yeah. And you know, it made me feel like if you can make me feel the way you're feeling acting, then you're doing a good job acting. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was, now that was a Middle Eastern character, an Arabic character, yes. um, and she's Muslim, wearing the hijab or part of it. And uh, but yet, that was what I was referring to earlier when you asked about the character. That was an Arabic actor. I mean, an Ar- yeah, an Arabic character, but in a in a very out of the box, counterintuitive role. I'm on the stand. You know, again, it's a you know they don't really. Um, they don't really explore in that particular episode that the marriage was, you know, um, a, a, a cultural American and Arabic marriage. Yes. But here's this here's this mom, or in that instance, the grandmother um, on the stand. It's it wasn't a typical role for a female Arabic actress to play, and that was really that was really a lot of fun. Yes, <laughs> and you. I asked you when we spoke the other day, when I said, what's your accent? And in the movies, in the shows, you had, you know, the Arabic accent. So I'm thinking, okay, this is what she's going to sound like. In the Falcon and Winter Soldier, you had you were the, the Prime Minister of India. So right. you kind of had that accent as well. Then when I spoke to you, I'm like, I can't figure out what your real accent is. What are you? It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, it's like... What's your accent? So when you told me you were from, you know, Trinidad or you grew up in Trinidad, then I started hearing that that mm-hmm. Caribbean in your voice. Mm-hmm. But I love how you could just flip it and sound the character that they tell you to play. Mm-hmm. If you're going to play 
you know, an Arabic ca- character, you're going to sound like the Arabic person that you're supposed to be playing. And I love that. It's, 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 I want to say it's almost difficult for some people, you know, it's like for us Filipinos, yeah, we can turn on the Filipino accent and, and try to do the Filipino thing. If I did it, I only can do it for about 10, 15 minutes. And I start, <laughs> I start getting lost. You have to do it through a whole movie. And that's a good, a good thing that, you know, well, th- you I bet you do. could probably do longer than you think, but yeah, thank you. That was, yeah. it's fun. And I have to say that one, I'm, I usually channel my dad the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so you meant you mentioned that. It's like, let's, English, let's... Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So um gotta go through my notes here. Um what was your most memorable role? Oh the most yeah. memorable. Most memorable. What's the the role that you say, God, if I had to play this character again, I'd do it. Um hmm. you know, it it quite possibly could be uh, the mom in reckless. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because it was so, um, it was, it was, it was, uh, emotionally demanding a little bit. And I was, I was glad that, you know, the, the director really liked, you know, what I brought to the characters as did the, as did the writers. I would have loved to, it, it wonderful to play from the perspective. I would have loved to have, um, shown more of her. Nice. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, from the clip, I haven't really watched the whole thing yet. And you know, when we're done with this, I'm definitely gonna sit down and watch not just the shorts, but everything else that you're in. Um, just cause that's usually what usually happens is I usually, I, I'll watch the movie and I'll say, man, I should have asked this question while I was watching. Oh. Oh, yeah, I should have watched it first then doctor. Um, um, before I forget, thank you for jumping on. I know it's nine o'clock over there oh, on the East coast and, and okay. thank you for, for jump. That's one of the challenges I have here is like, oh, Hey, right. do you guys want to jump on my show? Yeah. What time? Oh, this time. Well, I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, I'm not going to wake up that early in the morning to, to, to do a show, <laughs> you know? So thank you for do for, for jumping on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, you course. coming on, um, again, tremendous actress, just everything you. that you've done and you're, and you continue to do. Um, and, I guess we'll get to to the to the MCU questions that that yeah. that, <laughs> that the followers everyone's like okay what are you gonna get to no but but usually what I do and I brought this up to you um, before is I want to get to know you the actress you the person you who you are MCU there's a reason why they chose you to be in the MCU because it's everything that you've done before that and yeah. so that props to everything you've done in the past you. and you know whatever you have going on in the future i hope everything works out i hope they bring um bring you back in the mcu you know there's there's room for opportunity right the mcu is a big it's a big universe the mcu is from what i heard yes yeah they're still going yes still going strong great again another great group of people great you know just really welcoming when you're when you get the chance, and I'm I'm sure um, I can I can almost be positive other actors feel the same way. When you you end up jumping on a series where the the series regulars or others have been on there for a while and they develop a relationship, and you come in as a as a day player, um, and you you're welcomed the way they welcomed um, welcome the uh, it's it's a gift, and it, you know it's it doesn't. Um, I mean, you, you never know if it's going to happen, but when it does, uh, I certainly appreciated it. How did you, um, how did you get the role? How did you audition? Did you hear about it? And they say, okay, we want you to audition for it. That's my agent. My, uh, I have a, a, my agent in, in Florida that submitted me and the, the casting, um, uh, Chase Paris and Tara Feldstein in, in Georgia, um, called me in. So that's, that's them seeing me in the role and, and trusting me that I can show up and deliver. So I, I auditioned, um, you know, I actually, I auditioned the, the scene was very, it was long and, um, it seemed like there were a lot of different things going on. So I really didn't know what I was going to be playing. It, it felt like there were different, um, characters in the scene the long scene that they gave me to do yeah. so it, it you know it's just a nice surprise to be to be called and said hey they want to they want to book you so that was fun that was a fun phone call <laughs> let me ask you this this is a question that i get a lot um 
with 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 interviewing um you know actors and actresses how was the audition for the character in the marvel series versus all the other auditions you had was marvel a little more intimidating than the other ones um it was the the audition itself required action okay so that 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 was the trickiest part hoping because when we when we get these types of auditions you know we are we are imagining especially nowadays when they're all um self tape we are imagining what it might look like within the scene so we have to create it on our end and yes. so i would say that the the challenging part was more the technical and the things that it was calling for me to do and hoping that okay this is you know you, it's a risk we always take when we're auditioning and creating that moment for them so it was it was just mostly the technical acting um uh, action part of within the scene okay yeah okay. marvel if you guys need a podcaster you guys know what a what a what a look all right just watch this video that that i'm doing with salem right now <laughs> <laughs> How was it working with with Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan? Oh, they're such well. First of all, they're 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 acting. What they're required to do in terms yes. of speaking of action. Um, yes, it was, uh, it was just uh, uh, really amazing to watch, and just again, good humans, good people. Um, you know, and just it's 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 tricky because they're carrying it. You know, it's they're carrying this series, um, and so you know to create that atmosphere again to make those of us that are showing up um, as a day player, you know, in either a couple of episodes or whatever the case is, feel that welcomed um, and relaxed. It was yes. that you know, I mean, there were long days, <laughs> very long yes, days I'm when you're on any kind of a film or series that requires that much coordination you you just kind of plan for it being a long day yeah. and so you know to have that kind of atmosphere is it was it's very helpful and they nice. were great they were really great to work with and that's important um um that's important in any thing that you're doing any movies any care any uh tv shows that the main characters treat you guys as regular characters yeah. you know i've heard horror stories where <laughs> you know you had the a-listers who are like yeah. hey you're just you're just an extra i'm not going to talk to you yeah. um you know i've heard horror stories that way and to, you, you're the second one that brought this up and you're the second person that said yes these guys are real original regular type people that they make us feel welcoming when we're on studios and that's good to hear because yes. you don't know how many times we see people on the street and we think to ourselves god if i go up to him and ask him for this and that will he sh you know shrug me or can i actually go up there and say something you know how many times especially in san francisco how many times i've seen people and i just don't yeah. want to walk up to them because i'm afraid that they're going to give me that not now attitude and oh, yeah. now you're not going to be my favorite actor anymore so <laughs> <laughs> so that's good to hear that's good to hear yeah. that 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 that's how they treated you um, yeah it was set. really good and again it was it was such a uh especially um going when they ramped up in september you know they and again it was they were super long days um yes. and you know a lot of moments where you know they were having again to just plan on one thing but it had to turn in another direction because everything ramped up so quickly and they yes. were you know, they wanted to get this, this series up and up and finished, you know, in time to be released. And so, yeah, when it's a long, exhausting day and, you know, and honestly, the, especially they were, I mean, the crews during the filming, we were, um, part of the scenes were filmed in, uh, like a garage, underground garage, just for that. Yeah. I mean, the crew had to have masks on the whole, I mean, we all did. Oh. But, you know, when they yell, that's a wrap, we get to go home, get to the hotel room and they're there and they carry heavy equipment with masks yeah. on. It was just, it was a very unusual environment and hopefully not one we ever have to go through again. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's definitely a, a, an extra plus and an extra nice layer to have when they make it relaxed and welcoming. Nice. I mean, it's, 
the the TV series that went on, you know, you me watching you, um, I can feel that chemistry that you, especially that end, the very last episode where, you know, Captain America Anthony Mackie speaking to you guys about what's going on. Did he do that all in one take, or was there a few? You know, was there? Yeah. A- I mean, they they of course have to do you know. A, a, like you would imagine multiple takes where this, yes. but he did. And wow, what a monologue <laughs> that put a tear, that put a tear in my eye watching it. How was it with you, with him actually saying it to you, to you guys there? You know, he, he did such a good job that I was just kind of standing there taking it all in. I mean, it was just, you know, it, it, it was almost, you. I could tell that it was, it was something that he was really focused on, delivering so it could land yes in the way I imagine maybe he had hoped and and um and it didn't seem it didn't seem lectury it didn't seem because it could easily have been that but he just did such a really good job you know the you could being standing in front of him delivering those lines I could tell he he really wanted people to get what that what he was saying and it was so timely he went from you know, being, I wouldn't say an extra Avenger to maybe top of one of the Avengers right now, just by what he said and how he said it. I mean, Chris Evans said things in the past that we were like, wow, this is so true. But the way Anthony Mackie just delivered it, the way he said it and with what's going on in the world right now, on top of what he said, just brought everything together. And I'm like, wow, this is really deep. This is heartwarming. And, you know, seems like a good guy outside of, uh, outside oh, yeah. of, uh, Marvel. I mean, yeah. he's as good a guy as you can imagine. That's yeah. He was just a really good guy. And, you know, again, it's just it's long day and they're doing all these action stunts. And yeah, I mean, when you're having to, to do a stunt over and over and over again, it, I don't even know, you know, so yeah. yeah, it And so he, he was able to bring a little levity in between to just sort of remind everybody <laughs> we love doing this, yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're back. <laughs> so there we are. Yeah. Let me ask you, how does it feel to be part of the Marvel family? So good. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully they'll want the prime minister back. Let's see what yes. they think about that. Yes. They need her back. They need to bring her back. Wish. Yeah, yes. it, it really is a great, again, a great series. And what I, I guess they're the series, if I understand correctly, is sort of a precursor to the actual films coming back. I'm not sure with what Disney's doing. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the series are going to tie into the bigger picture um, when yeah. WandaVision they finished WandaVision was, was the first MCU uh, Disney plus right. that's supposed to tie into the Dr. Strange um, movie that's supposed to be coming out. Oh, you see, um, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. And then this one right here, the Falcon and winter soldier. Um, I don't know if it's going to tie into a, a captain America, if it's going to tie into the Bucky winter soldier story, right. or if they're just going to do another series um, you know, season two or ep- no season two going. kind of thing. You just keep going. Um, right. I like them either or. I mean, you know, with yeah. with the whole COVID, I got comfortable just watching everything at home, watching yes. it when I want to, going to the bathroom when I need to, um, <laughs> instead of paying the you know twenty thirty dollars and I know. anything was missing was a good popcorn. But other than that, I enjoyed watching it at home. Yeah, so, I think I think a lot. I think it everybody discovered that, and it's interesting because I'm seeing films you know, being uh, released in theaters and streaming. So it yes. looks like everybody's on to the fact that this, you know, some people are still going to want to enjoy being at home and yes. some people are looking forward to getting back in theaters. But I think I had seen Disney. I think they are going to be releasing something in 2022. I don't know if it's um, one or two, or if it's already in production. So it it will be interesting to see if they release it both or if by 2022 they're just going to go, you know, let's just yeah. take it back to the theaters and see what happens. Well, they're money makers of theaters, right? right. They're money makers of theaters. Um, so hopefully with everything that's going on, the pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, we can, we can, you know, clear that all out the air and we can see the prime minister of India on the big screen, you know, <laughs> talking, to, talking to Bucky and, 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 and Sam over there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, again, it was, it was a cool, 
cool thing to see you on there and cool. It was really nice to see what you've accomplished making your way to, you know, the MCU. And, and, you know, and I said this before, um, is you have to start somewhere to get somewhere. So true. Right? And, and you had to pay your dues by doing what you did, the little things, the shorts that you did to be part of a bigger picture. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, big congratulations for you for being on, you know, probably the biggest, I want to say the biggest industry right now, which, you know, which is Marvel. Mm -hmm. And like I said, your character in Stranger Things, they didn't kill you off. So that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that, so would be, could, that would be lovely. We're going to send that out there and see what happens. <laughs> they can always bring you back. Disney, if you're watching Marvel, if you're watching, let's bring back the part. How do you, it's Prime Minister Lacant. Lacant, yeah. Lacant, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes, you were representative of the global, was it the global? The GRC. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was so long. That whole, <laughs> was, bringing everybody together. Again, so timely and they you know they did a really good job thematically they did a really good job without it seeing lecture yes because of what we yes. were coming out of you know i was only disappointed that it, it, it ended in six episodes i was hoping um yeah at least 10 episodes um i felt like the oh. last episode was just kind of rushed you know i felt like oh you know, the flag smashers were in one part of the united states and then all of a sudden they're in new york and then all of a sudden it's over i'm like oh man that's they left us hanging. Uh, maybe well, I don't know. <laughs> you probably know, but you won't tell us. And I respect that. I re totally, I totally respect that. I, I know not to ask the questions that that's going to get you or me in trouble. So, <laughs> um, before we end this, um, what's your future plans? Any anything in the works that we need to look out for? I am. I'm doing some writing to possibly create um, another short, um, yes. you know, with a collaborative effort. Again, I, I just enjoy collaborative efforts. And, uh, you know, now that things are really opening up, um, just getting back out there and, and doing as many auditions and, and, you know, hoping the opportunities will come again. I'm, I'm sure they will just, uh, just getting back out there. There's a new, um, there is a new series on Hulu coming up called um, Only Murders in the Building. Okay. It's due to release August. Of the, oh, okay. In a couple months. So if, yeah, if you, you might catch me, if you blink, you really will miss me in this one, but uh -huh. um, it's, it's looks like it's going to be an, a really great series. Um, uh, I, think it's a, I think it's slated as a dramedy. Only Murders. Only Murders in the Building on oh, Hulu. Wow. Yeah, that, that comes sounds... out. I think they said the end of August, if I'm not mistaken, but sometime in August is the release of that one. And that one I got to play a music conductor, so that was always fun. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I, I love the little characters where, you know, you can have your Anthony Mackies, you can have your Sebastian Stans, but it's it's the 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 smaller roles that always catches my eye. And you know, when I saw you in the Falcon and Winter Soldier and when I was trying to figure out where I saw you from, I was like, her role is perfect because you had enough screen time, screen time, and you had enough, you know, words that you can, you, you, you know, a lot of people, they're just background. You don't hear them, but you had enough to where I was like, okay, I'm going to see if I can reach out to her and see if she can jump on the show. <laughs> and thank you again. Thank you again for jumping on. I, I totally, oh, you're really, welcome appreciate you taking your time it is i know it's laid out in new york so i'm going to get you off very soon um i just this comment that from the grapes of leaves i don't know if you saw this comment at the very end of the show um they it's from Rumi, and it says yesterday i was clever so i wanted to change the world mm -hmm. today i'm wise so i'm changing myself yes yes we that, deliberately put that in as a yeah that's very deep because if you watch that show and you think of what's going on in the world right now, it still hits us very hard here. What's uh -huh. going on with the world from everything from, you know, in the United States, overseas, everywhere, the pandemic that we just, we just dealt with, you know, this comment, this quote right here is my new favorite quote. Yeah. Um, good. So. Yeah. It's because it's, um, it's, it, I, I feel like it's, it's more important to just, um, you know, focus on, on what, what we need to, what we need to flesh out before yes. we, you know, before we go about um, trying to change everything. 
<laughs> I'm going to have to reach out to to uh, the IMDb's or the Wikipedia's because I just Googled famous Trinidadians. Yeah. And you're not on here. And I need to get you on here. I need to get them. She needs to be on here. Yeah, yeah, Nicki Minaj. But, you know, Nicki Minaj. We we need Salem Murphy. I'm trying to figure out, what are are the other Trinidadian actors? There have to be some. Well, there's Winston Duke. I don't know if you know Winston Duke. He was in, he was in, um, um, he was in Us, the TV, the movie called Us. And he was also in uh, Black Panther. Really? Uh, Yeah, yeah. He's Trinidadian? Well, he's on the list. He's on. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, well, was, that's exciting. Sorry, he was born in. Uh, t- he's Tobagian, so he was born. That Trinidad Tobago. and Tobago. That's they okay. go together. It, okay, they're, well, they're sister islands. So he's yeah, he's boy, he's Trini. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you should. You guys are both in the MCU, which is a cool thing. That right. is neat. Okay, well, that's that's good to know that there's Everyone other else, Trinis out there. Everyone else besides Nick Minaj, I don't, I don't, I don't know who they are, but I'm pretty sure um, actors and actresses might know who they are. As so well. wait, Nicki Minaj is also Caribbean. Let's see. Let's click on her thing and what we'll she's she's from. I never would have guessed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said she's right. from Trinidad. She was born in Trinidad. What? Never yeah. knew that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I okay. Well, I learned something new today. Then <laughs> now we got to add Salem Murphy <laughs> on here and put her on next to all the Trinidadians and Toboggans on here. I like so that idea. <laughs> we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Uh, uh, Salem Murphy, everyone who watched us on Facebook Live, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, very, very, very interesting. And God, just everything about you. It's just like. You guys got to watch her shows. You got to watch all her shorts. You got to watch everything that she has. <laughs> Trust me, grapes, grape of leaves. Grape leaves, yeah. Grape leaves is one you guys got to all watch. And then Uzma, the greatest, also you guys got to watch. That's probably one of my favorites right now. So, <laughs> thanks so much for um, asking me on, Eric. I appreciate oh, it. No, thank you again. We gotta gotta give you a round of applause for <laughs> for being on here. For being thank on you. here. Um, Thank you. And for everyone who's watching, for you, your friends who reached out to me, thank you guys for reaching out to me. Um, this is going to be on YouTube. So later on, if you want to share the YouTube link, you can go ahead and do All that. Right. Share the YouTube link. And I'm also going to put it on my podcast. So okay. for people who are not visual and would rather listen, um, this is going to be on my podcast. And I'll share all that link with you when I'm done with everything else here. Okay. That sounds right. great. Thank you, Eric, so much. So, Lem, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, have a good night there in New York. I will. All right. right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. (laughs) All right. That was Salem Murphy. Man, that was a cool, cool show. That was a cool podcast. Definitely, definitely loved having her on here. Um, you guys, again, thank you guys for jumping on for you guys who jumped on Facebook live. There was a couple of you guys on here. Ryan Aziz, thank you for jumping on. Thank you for, you know, share, um, um, correcting me with the, the Middle East versus the Arabs. Thank you for doing that. That was, that was kind of you. Um, sorry, my, my, um, geography or when it comes to that, it's not the best. Um, also want to thank, um, Marla, Marla Tadlock for, uh, coming on as well. She reached out to me earlier and said, Hey, you know, are you going to have Salem on your show today? And I said, yes, and shared the links with her. So thank you for jumping on. Thank you, Salem Murphy. Again, check her out. She has a lot of cool shorts that's out right now. Let me just go ahead and look over her IMDb page right here. Uzma, the greatest is, is a good short. Extreme is a good short. Echoes of regret. Those, those are three shorts that I would think. And, um, the other one that we talk grape leaves is a very, very, very good one to watch. So if you guys are looking for something short, these are these are about no more than ten minutes long. So if you guys are looking for something cool to watch, Selen Murphy, go ahead and IMDb her, and looking forward to seeing her again on the Falcon and Winter Soldier. That sounds like something cool that I can't wait for. So. But for you guys who watched, for you guys who stayed on, thank you guys for watching. And we will go out the way we went in. Thanks for watching, guys. The podcast has ended. Go in peace.
All right, Facebook. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, I can't even speak anymore. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys soon.